There you go gamers, wave 2 of the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Pass is finally out. It's been a while and I was getting sick of all the rumors, so I'm actually glad we can finally take it for a spin and enjoy the 8 tracks we've been given. 7 of those are classic tracks that have been updated and, surprise surprise, we have one brand new, never seen before track, so it's actually super cool. Today, we'll be checking out all 8 tracks one by one and I'll show you a bunch of things you probably didn't see because you were racing way too fast. This one was obviously going to make the cut as it's one of the coolest Mario Kart Tour tracks. Welcome to New York Minute, a track taking place in the Big Apple. And as it is based on a real life city, well, it's going to be full of real landmarks. Look at Times Square, looking fabulous in glorious HD, and look at the big advertising screens. They showcase cool stuff such as the Banana Boy smash hit musical, the Donkey Kong musical, aka the best one, Barrel Travel, and a few other brands. There's also a big screen showcasing the classic Donkey Kong arcade layout. It almost reminds me of Super Mario Odyssey's very own New Dunk City in a way. Close to the starting line, you'll be able to see a comedy club, a dinner, a deli, a restaurant, and New York's famous hot dog stands. Mm. I wish I could eat one of those delicious glizzies. You'll be racing from Broadway to Central Park, featuring beautiful trees, benches, and enormous Goombas, probably to symbolize New York's famous big scary rats. Ugh. You'll also get to visit the Rockefeller Center, which, if you're not aware of it, is where the Nintendo New York store is actually located. Ah, this makes me wish one part of the track would take place inside the store itself. Anyways, as you're racing, you'll be able to see the wonderful Empire State Building and the St. Patrick's Cathedral, and as you can see, they're looking pretty faithful to the real-life versions. As you are racing in the streets, get ready to meet a bunch of taxis, all from the Green Shell Taxi Company. And one thing that is weird is that these taxis don't move, they're kinda just parked in the middle of the street, that can't be legal. There's also big tourist buses from Toad City, which is a bit odd considering we are in New York City. I guess Toad City is just visiting New York City? Uh, we'll never know. Next up is a very classic track that originates from the Super Nintendo game, but was also present in the Wii One Mario Circuit 3. For those of you that have played it, you know this is a very simple racetrack that doesn't actually feature that many cool details. No slopes, no anti-gravity, just a simple racetrack for carts. A couple of spectators were actually added in the background, such as toads, shy guys and piranha plants, as well as a couple of flagpoles located in the center of the track, which is actually a neat detail. This track always contains oil spills, which are pretty annoying, and this new version of Mario Kart decided to clean up the oily mess. Nah, just kidding, they just put cones in front of them to warn you about potential car accidents. You know what? Maybe if this track gets ported again in the future, in Mario Kart 12, the oil will finally be cleaned. But you know what? I wouldn't count on it. This next one is a favorite of mine, and one I would love to play over and over again as a kid. N64 Calimary Desert is back, along with the evil train that can crush your hopes and dreams. Although it seems like they actually made the train shorter than it used to be. This track was already part of Mario Kart Tour, so this is the version that was brought to the Booster Pass. And I have to tell you that this is a great revision of the classic track, adding new elements such as this big slope you can glide off of, as well as a driving section in the tunnel itself. I actually made a Nico short video where I was exploring the tunnel in the original N64 version and there wasn't much to it, but now it's actually part of the racetrack making this one the definitive way to experience the desert. Just like New York Minute, this track has a couple differences in between laps, and lap 2 adds this big ramp that will bring you right in the train tracks and eventually down the dark tunnel. This ramp is only there for lap 2, 
and just like Paris Promenade, if you play it with two players and one of you is on lap 1 and the other on lap 2, well, this will lead to some funny looking moments. Like here, where we see floating drivers, or this one where a driver is going right through the ramp. While you're not visiting the tunnel, you'll get to see a bunch of billboards advertising different companies from the Mushroom Kingdom, such as Mario Work Gear, Banana Boy, Bullet Bill Speed Trial, 1UP Fuel, and even the Green Shell Taxi. You know, the company that had all of those cabs in New York Minute. Pretty cool detail. While Waluigi may not have his very own game series, he has a couple of tracks and DS Waluigi Pinball is definitely the very best. Right as you start the race, you'll be sucked into this light tunnel, which is actually way cooler than it used to be in Mario Kart DS. I mean, look at all the pretty colors! Anyway, at the end of the tunnel, there's a big screen featuring Waluigi next to the name of the track, and under it, there's another screen displaying Waluigi number one. Which is actually the truth, Waluigi is always gonna be number one in my heart. When you finally land on the pinball machine, well get ready to dodge the pinballs, the bumpers and all of the other hazards on the way. Oh, by the way, have you noticed how there's ads all around the pinball machine itself? Companies such as Fuzzy Battery, Road Service MAA, Mario Motors and more can all be spotted. And I guess that makes sense, as building a giant pinball machine must be hella expensive and will definitely require some sponsorship money. Every time you grab an item box on this track, well the sound effect that the game makes will be retro, which is actually super cool. Same thing for the sound after each lap. This was also the case in Mario Kart DS, but I'm super glad they brought it back. Above the tunnel, where an evil Waluigi statue used to loom over you on the DS version, now sits a wooden sign of Waluigi, with his head nodding left and right, which is actually kinda cool. The slot machine underneath this sign also shows a bunch of different Mario Kart items, all of which can be obtained in this version of the game. Some flying paratroopers can be seen around the track spectating your every move, so make sure not to suck, okay? as the Mario Kart TV helicopter is also flying above you at all times, capturing some epic highlights to show you after the race. Here's another track inspired by the real world. Welcome to Sydney Sprint, a track taking place in Australia and allowing you to spot many different landmarks that I'd love to visit one day when I go meet Luke and Kev from SMG4. But for now, let's check out the different places we can visit in the game itself, such as the Sydney Opera House, a venue for shows and art showcases. It seems like we are on floor Yoshi Egg according to the sign next to the elevator. Why not use numbers? Using symbols like a Yoshi Egg is super confusing. Anyways, some ugly looking 2D spectators moving at 15 frames per second will be cheering for you as you fly out the Opera House and fly into an amusement park, which bears strong resemblance to Luna Park. The real life version seems to feature a very scary looking face that acts as a gate. And you know what, I'm actually glad this is not part of the Mario Kart version, that thing is just terrifying. The track also features the Sydney Harbour Bridge, the Tangara trains with passengers throwing out coins your way. On your first lap, you're not going to be able to use the ramps located on that bridge, but for lap 2 and lap 3, you'll be on the right side, meaning you'll be able to go quite fast. If you're not into crossing bridges, don't panic, as you can also ride the Sydney Harbour passenger ferry and meet everyone that commutes there every single day. Hello passengers, how are you doing today? You'll also be driving near the Mary Booth Lookout Reserve before making your way back to the Port Jackson area. And if you're hungry, you might want to eat some blooper seafood. Mm, is blooper the seafood? Or is the chef making the seafood blooper? I think we don't want to know that. Well, this one was a big surprise. I wasn't actually expecting GBA Snowland to make its debut before Vanilla Lake, but this is actually super cool. Obviously, as this track was originally for the GBA, well, the graphics are just insane compared to what it used to look like. I mean, take a good look. K 
Can you even tell it's the same track? What I like the most about this one is that they actually put effort into making it really cool and different by adding ramps and different altitudes. Between you and I, they could have done the same thing with Mario Circuit 3 to make it actually worth your time, but hey, let's focus on the good stuff. What we have here is an amazing snow track featuring snow, ice, and everyone's favorite, penguins. Yes, they're back. Make sure not to run them over though. They follow a set path and will always end up jumping in the water. I tried to join them, but I wouldn't do it if I were you. Once again, spectators are located all over the track cheering for the racers, and as you can see, the toads are actually wearing winter jackets this time around. What a neat detail. The original track had tons of holes on the ice, and it seems that a lot of those have been patched in this revision, and there's also fewer snowmen on your way. You can go out of your way to destroy them if you actually feel like a bully. Next up is Mushroom Gorge, a fan favorite and this track hasn't changed that much over the years, although it has now been filled with ads and billboards all over the place. Man, I swear there are ads all over the place nowadays, even on YouTube itself. The cave part of the track is now filled with bright crystals lighting up the section, making it look super cool, and the light from these crystals probably has healing and growing properties, because I swear there are now way more mushrooms in the cave compared to the Wii version. In fact, instead of having two different paths, there's now a third one with a blue mushroom that allows you to glide your way through the cave. Oh heck yeah! These jumps always made me super nervous, so I'm super glad I actually have an alternative now. If you go left instead of bouncing on the mushroom over there, well there are now speed boosts that have been added, rendering this left section not so useless anymore. On 200cc, I'm sure this super shortcut over the ramp near the end can be done. I'm just not good enough myself, but I know somebody will figure it out. Finally, there are more toads and paratroopas located all over the tracks, cheering for the driver, which is always welcomed. Now this is a cool surprise, here's a brand new track to end the propeller cup. Welcome to Sky High Sunday, and if you're hungry right now, well you might want to close your eyes, as this track is full of frosting, ice cream and a bunch of delicious frozen treats. The track starts off inside of this icy restaurant full of customers having delicious ice creams. Yoshis are there to serve you your favorite treat and I soon noticed that this restaurant is actually inside the freezer of a giant pink fridge. Yo, this is super cool. As you race on the dairy deliciousness, you'll see a bunch of shops, like this soft serve one, this ice cream truck, or even these ice pop, ice cream and ice cafe shops. Man, I wish we could actually enter all of those and taste everything. A giant ice cream will await you at the top of this ramp, and as you go down, you land on some ice cream waffles and those melted ice cream cones. Oh, by the way, have you noticed that the helicopter is now in the shape and look of an ice cream cone? Now this is suiting. You'll ride on blocks of ice and will make your way back into the fridge to finish a lap. If you're wondering where the cream and milk to make those delicious treats comes from, wonder no more, as this big billboard of the Moo Moo Meadow Milk Company is definitely the answer to that question. What a cool original track, I love it, Wave 2 is amazing. Thanks a lot for watching this video, and if you want to learn about all of the secrets from the Wave 1 DLC, well, tap the cards on screen right now. I'll see you in the next video, bye bye!